Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Monday, April 1st. It's a new month. It's April Fool's Day. But we're not but doing that. I'll be honest with you this whole time, all yeah. right? No I fooling. I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. I'm Beth Stevens. And we are joined here in the studio by the fantastic. Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And we have an equally fantastic guest with us this afternoon. We have Eddie Jemison from Waitress Yay. making his Broadway debut. Woo -woo. Very excited to speak with him. But before we talk to Eddie, let's talk about today's top five. This show opened last night and it's a hit. Happy opening one day late to What the Constitution Means to Absolutely. Me by Heidi Schreck. You're Very feeling excited. patriotic yes, at the moment? I am. It was originally scheduled to play through June 9th, which is Tony Night, mm -hmm. but it's now playing through July 21st. So That's you have right. some more time to see Heidi Schreck and co. in what the Constitution means to me. Really great show. Yeah, absolutely. Got at, raves. It got last rave night reviews this acclaimed mm -hmm. at the Helen Hayes Theater. Check it out. So excited. This new play is already making headlines, and it hasn't even had its first performance yet. Yes, speaking of ex extensions, James Graham's new play, Inc., which will begin pre pre previews at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater tomorrow, has already extended as well. It was originally supposed to play through June 9th, but now theatergoers have until June 16th to check out Inc. This, of course, follows a young Rupert Murdoch and a young Larry Lamb as they were creating the British tabloid newspaper the magazine, The Sun. Um, very, very interesting. James Graham, as I said, it is his new play. It stars Bertie Carvel, who won an Olivier Award for it, mm -hmm. and Johnny Lee Miller, and it is directed by Rupert Gould. Begins previews tomorrow. Very excited to see this one, and you have until June 16th to see it. Some stage and screen stars are heading under the sea in Hollywood. You guys are excited because exciting. we're yeah. talking about The Little Mermaid yes. at the Hollywood Bowl. Are you ready for this casting? You're, You're not, not ready. No. You're, You're not. so not ready. First of all, it's in honor of the movie's 30th anniversary. Which, wow. 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 Yeah, Everyone that take a moment, a take it in. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leading the cast will be Leah Michelle as Aww. Ariel. Yes. She's going to put her. the seashells on. Yeah. Uh, girl. Harvey Firestein will play Ursula the Sea Witch. <laughs> Yes. Fine. Yep. Makes That's, sense. That's, you yep. know, typecasting yep. once yep. again, I Harvey. <laughs> I can see it. Ken mm -hmm. Page, Broadway legend Ken Page, will play Sebastian Cheech Marin as Chef Louis. It's got a French accent, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Yes. And Peter Gallagher as King Triton. Uh, Richard Kraft is directing the two-night event May 17th and May 18th at the Hollywood Bowl. The tickets go on sale tomorrow at 10 a.m. These are always such a blast. Huge. Yeah. yeah Huge. So uh, listen to this. The production will feature, this is a quote, living scenery. Does that mean fish? I don't know. Scenery. What do you mean? Seaweed? Like just walls of like Water? aquariums? Transforming the outdoor Los Angeles venue into the Hollywood Fishbowl Dive In Theater. Oh, Sounds like someone's getting okay. wet. Excited. That's yeah. what I have to say Splash about that. Some. <laughs> and this Tony nominated one man show is hitting the country. Yes, John Leguizamo's Latin History for Morons, which was nominated for Best Play at last year's Tony Awards. I know you loved it. I, I loved did. It I love Johnny well. Legs. Me too. <laughs> it is embarking on a national tour. It will kick off at the Apollo Theater here in Harlem, New York City. Um, it will travel to over 15, more than 15 cities across North America, including Atlanta, Dallas, Miami, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, San Antonio. It's going coast to coast. And it will uh, have a seven-week engagement at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles. Angeles. Mm -hmm. Latin History for Morons was inspired by John Leguizamo uh, finding out in his son's uh, uh, American history class there was no mention of uh, Latinos participating in American history, which is just very wrong. Um, <laughs> so uh, he created this play. It's super funny, directed by Tony Tacone, of course, um, and it will kick off at the Apollo Theater on June 20th. And this Tony winner is coming back to the New York stage. We are talking about Wilson Germain. Heredia, who won a Tony yes. for Rent in 1996. And I have to say, if you're ever in a bad mood, go on YouTube and just watch his Tony That's acceptance speech, advice. and it will That's put you, advice. it will just yeah. lift you right up. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he's coming back to the stage in Adam Seidel's world premiere work, Original Sound. It's at the Cherry Lane Theater. It begins previews on April 30th and opens on May 9th. And uh, it follows a young New Yorican beat maker who calls out a rising pop star for ripping off his track. Ooh, oh, conflict. Yes. Spicy. Also, yeah, Spicy. ripped from the headlines. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And it's playing a limited run through June 8th. 
fantastic. And there are a few other interesting things that you can check out on the Broadway.com site right now. Of course, as we mentioned, What the Constitution Means to Me opened, and there is a new red carpet challenge. Their photo gallery, portrait booth, all of that is either up or about to go up very, very soon. There is a new episode of London Calling with Imogen Lloyd Webber. Very You said exciting. that with an American accent. I <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what else? There's an April Save the Day. All of us on the staff, we picked the things that we are most excited to see, listen to, experience in April. Some great picks on there. And you, I know, you were there for the Five Genies. Right. Five Genies in Aladdin. Happy fifth anniversary to Aladdin yesterday. Absolutely. I took my eight-year-old daughter who just had a magical time. Of course. Five Genies, including James Monroe Iglehart, who won the Tony, and Michael James Scott, who currently plays the role, got together. Amazing. We have some footage of that and as I told my eight-year-old, I do not know how the magic carpet works. <laughs> None of us <laughs> No do. idea. No Top one knows. Disney secret. All right. <laughs> Beth, thank you so much. Thank you. Caitlin, why don't you tell us about today's guest? Gladly. Yes, we have Eddie Jemison in the studio with us today. He's currently making his Broadway debut as Ogie and Waitress. This is a role that he actually originated in the 2000 film that the musical is based on. It's super awesome. He's known for his several screen credits that include The Oceans Trilogy, Chicago Med, iZombie, and a whole lot more. This guy's resume is extremely long. Make sure to follow Waitress Musical on social media. Stay up to date on all things about Waitress and what Eddie's doing and all the fun that's happening over there at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. Uh, please leave all of your questions in the comments below and please welcome Eddie and Ryan. Hello there, sir. Hey. Thanks, thanks for joining us thanks online. Thanks for having of me. Of course, of course. I'm so excited to talk to you as... Um, as someone may have told you already, Waitress is quite possibly my favorite show on Broadway. I absolutely love this show. It's I'm true. the waitress expert around here. Um, so this is a big deal for me. Oh, no. Um, and hopefully it's a big deal for you, too. Um, how it is are, a big deal for me. How are things over at the Brooks Atkinson Theater? I have lots of questions to ask you about how you got here, but how are things over there? It's great. I, you know, um, how long have I been doing this? About a month and a half? Uh, I think so, yeah. And you're until April 28th, people yeah. can come see you, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's really fun. Yeah. It's really I, fun. It's my first Broadway show. Right. And my first musical. Right. So uh, it's everything's it's a big deal. <laughs> everything's new to me. It was like it's like being thrown into it was like being thrown into a Broadway show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which <laughs> that is, was a musical. Which is a tall order. Yes. So um, it's it's a blast. And it's well, been that's good to hear. So I mean it's I'm learning fast and, mm -hmm. and or not. <laughs> but it's fun. You're learning at the right pace. But I it think, is yeah. so fun. It is. It's such a fun show. Audiences love it. I want to retrace a little bit of your journey as to how you got here. Of course, you originated the role of Ogi in Adrian Shelley's film, 2007. Um, but you had not seen the show while it was here on Broadway, right? You saw the tour, right? That's right. So, so what happened? You you go to see the tour. So I went to see um, the tour mm -hmm. with my daughter in Los Angeles at the Pantages. Right, absolutely. I didn't want to see it because I didn't want to see someone be great. And I knew and I'd heard how great okay. he right. was, Jeremy. Jeremy it? Morse, yeah, Jeremy absolutely. Mor Jeremy Morse yeah. was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I was very uh, angry about that. <laughs> Happy for Jeremy, but <laughs> angry about how good he is. He yep. was super sweet to me. <laughs> He's a super Barry sweet guy. Barry Weisler was yep. there. Yeah. Okay. And he said, uh, he was really taken with my daughter, really. Mm -hmm. And so he was forced to talk to me. And he said, <laughs> uh, do you sing and dance? Because we're always looking for a new ogie. Yeah. And I said, no, I've never done those things. But he called me anyway. And uh, I was, to be honest, I had had a few beers okay. when he called. And so okay. I said, yeah, I'll try. Absolutely. And so and then I'm here. You put yourself <laughs> on tape, I'm assuming. I put myself on tape, okay. yeah. Okay, right. And I mean, it all worked out. It and did. And here you are. You are, I mean, I don't know how often it happens. Speaking of Aladdin, I know, you know, it happens every once in a while that someone originates a role on film and then gets to do it on Broadway. But I don't think there are many. Yeah. Um, Jafar in Aladdin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so it's, oh, that's still cool. a, it's still a fairly new and interesting thing. So you're a groundbreaker here, Eddie Jemison. Well, I feel uh, like there's <laughs> this like brotherhood of ogies. Yeah, because. Right. Oh. Because, uh, you know, I did so much of what I saw Jeremy do. Right. And then I do so much of what Chris, I've, I've seen him do. Yeah. And Chris said he had watched the film quite a few times. Mm -hmm. So we're all basing our interpretations on each other. Yeah. So like who knows? Yeah, it's like a <laughs> circle of ogie. Well, well, it's a really greasy, ringy circle. <laughs> 
It's very entertaining, Sir Gold. So what, what yeah. you, what's something, what's the first thing that you um, recognized when you were reading the, the script for the musical? What's, what are the things you picked up on on how the character was different? Or just, what would immediately struck you about The biggest all? difference I found right away was that Ogie in the film, he's such a crybaby. He's so emotional. Mm. Right. He, you had to cry a lot. He breaks in that down, movie. <laughs> and Adrian <laughs> Shelley was very adamant about that. Really, she's like, "Yeah," I was like, "I don't know if I can cry on screen mm -hmm. on cue," and she said, "Oh, you will, and you're going to do it now, <laughs> and you're going to do it well." <laughs> and she was right because she brought that out. Yeah, you know, she demanded it, and she, sure, and so she got it. Right. And in this, as soon as I read it, in Jesse Nelson's script, mm -hmm. that it was so, full, and then when I saw these guys do it, it was so full of joy. Right. And nothing yes. but joy, like joy distilled, like vanilla extract, like it's almost too much joy. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest difference. Totally, because yeah. once like Ogie enters and uh, you are never ever getting rid of me is just such a showstopper. I mean, he he really is. Like he brings so much joy into that show every single time he's yeah. up there. Was that? I'm assuming it would be a, that's a, it was a little bit of a relief as opposed to having to ball on stage every but like to ah, to, ah. to be the force of joy into that show. I felt the same sense of panic, like mm. oh my god, <laughs> now I have to do this. I have to be like Chris Fitzgerald, Bugs Bunny, Hopping all around. rolled up, <laughs> right. and then right. and then you realize oh you can do that too. Mm -hmm. It's so it is a relief every night before I go on, like because it's one thing to do you know cry a few nights a few days on set. Yeah, yeah, because. I think this film I was did it for maybe fourteen days and sure yeah so that was right. the rehearsal period for the for the play mm -hmm. so every night having to do it it's a lot easier to be happy yeah, yeah. right and what do you I mean that score Sarah Bareilles's music for Amazing. that show is just so do you do you love singing it is is are you have you found a new artist that you love through it all <laughs> or actually yeah I mean and I find old artists in in her music too like. I talked to the music director and I said, "There's a." She kept saying, "You're you're doing this this song. You never um never getting rid of me. Too countryfied. It's got too much mm. swing. You need to sort of be on the beat more." Okay. And she said, "Compared to Maxwell Sil Maxwell Silverhammer from oh, the Beatles, right. sure, yeah." Right. And I got it. And then I started hearing all these Beatles references in the score. And I mm. asked her about that. She said, "Oh yeah, yeah that's Sarah's Sarah. a huge fan of." Of many things, and that's Absolutely. one of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah, the, the music is it's so amazing. Good. Um, so good. And you a were... Soft Place to Land. Uh, I, I mean... get to listen to that in the wings <laughs> every time before I go on. No, I'm very jealous. It's so inspiring. It is inspiring. It is. It is. No, she's an, a dynamo. You were part of a band at one point in yeah. your life, right? You traveled, right? With, I as did. a member of a band. I was in a band, I was in a garage <laughs> rock band. <laughs> Was that your? Was that the initial plan of what you sort of wanted to do? Take me what what. But what that? Why to, that happened? Yeah, like what? What was that? Well, part I was, of your life? I was in um doing trying to be an actor in Chicago, right? In Chicago theater, right? Yeah, yeah. doing theater. I was somewhat successful, mm -hmm. and um, I just I there were so few that I had so much time on my hands. I decided to to learn how to play guitar and start a band and and. That kind of took over. I don't know why it was wow, the stupidest thing I ever did. <laughs> no, I quit, I'm sure. I quit what a acting life for a while to do this band. Right. Yeah, and, and it was when is it when you came back that you met your uh, doing Chicago Shakespeare that you met your wife? That's right, and that's when and the first thing I did after that we did Chicago Shakespeare and and it was the Oceans movies. So I immediately right. the band broke up. A few months later, I found out I was in this film. Right, I'd gone to an audition for another a Coen Brothers film. Okay. And the casting director said, oh, you're Eddie Jemison. I've been looking for you. And I said, oh, yeah, my, Have you? my agent, <laughs> she went, um, she became defunct. She went under her oh, agency. Okay. Got it. So Got I was un unrepresented. She said, I have a script for you in, a, in the car for this movie that's coming up. It's called Ocean's Eleven. A lot of famous guys are in it. You're one of the guys. And I was like, I, I don't have to audition? Wow. She's like, no, you're in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I have the script. Start learning your lines. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? What? So was I moved that? to LA and I, became, and I gave up the Garage Band. Right. Oh. Well, what, what was the experience of being in that? I mean, because that was just such a huge movie with yeah. so many just giant, giant stars. 
what what was that experience like? It's a, it's a for your first film. I mean, that's just mind blowing. It is almost exactly it's, like my experience in this in, play. Uh, yeah, like life coming I'm, full circle. Suddenly, someone right. says pushes me <laughs> to do something that I don't think I can do with a bunch of people that are far better at it than I am. Mm. So um, it was the same way. I was uh, panicked and and scared and. Yeah. And did just did my best. Just started right. swimming. You're just a throw yourself right into the fire type of person. The world does that. <laughs> just, just a trial by fire. And now here you are. You're living in New York City as exciting. I'm assuming you must miss your family, right? Because are do. they still on the... They're how, still in L.A. Right. So yeah. what is the experience being in New York City, starring in a Broadway show? What's what's going through your head? What's going through your heart? Well, I, I got a place in the East Village. Oh, fantastic. So that's somewhere. All right. When I have, authentic. <laughs> <laughs> when I New had York my City fantasy experience. of New, my New York fantasy, because right. I always wanted to live here when I was sure. young. Mm -hmm. That's where I wanted to live. I wanted to be, you know, like living yeah. in the village. Right, like, with all I the, think the, I'd the seen artists Serpico. And, yeah, and, absolutely. Was, <laughs> 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 you know, and I like yeah. read the beat. Beat poets and everything when I was in school, so I, I I can't believe I wound up there, but just by accident. Right. And it's I, it's apparently it's very different. Yeah, I'm I'm think it's I think it's had a few uh, yeah. you know like revolutions. Like coffee's that, really yeah, expensive. And, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, I I really like it down yeah. there. Yeah. What and do you like to do in your free time? What are you? What are you I like on? there's tiny little um, coffee shops and tiny little bars all around the all the East Village, and I like to go to them. Yeah. And um. And to be honest, uh, I haven't had a lot of free time. Sure, no, it's a very, it's a yeah, grueling I have schedule. A, a <laughs> lot of people that come see me, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so I gotta hang with them. You do, and, you yeah. know what I yeah. mean? No, of course, After yeah, the absolutely. Show and stuff. Keep up your social, you know. So, dates. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna go see the ferryman. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Because you guys yes. said it was the greatest. We are very big fans we of that around ferryman. here. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So I'll be doing that on my day off. All Wednesday. right. You know, that's a good, that's a good day off. I know we're gonna open it up yes. uh, to take some questions for a moment, but um, before we do. Just just tell me what's the uh, what's an impression you've gotten of the the waitress fans yeah, at the stage door in the in the theater reacting to all of this? What's something that you you've noticed about the those that love this show? What a great question! <laughs> <laughs> and you could if you need to tinker on it, feel free. But what have I noticed about the fans? Mm. They seem fiercely loyal in a way that I think I'm not loyal to even the things I love most. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I'm as loyal to my family as these people are. <laughs> to this show. The fans yeah. are very loyal. They are, yeah. Super informed. I say this from, yeah. <laughs> like, right. They know yeah. so much about so many of the actors. Mm -hmm. And... Um, really sweet. Yeah. I. That's a cool thing, like, every night. I know this sounds a little vain, but... Um, I've had struggled because I, it, this was something that is new to me. Yeah, yeah. And you know, when, when you're doing a film, you don't know how you're doing. Right. And, but then, and you won't know until, but in, yeah. But during right. this play, like, you know immediately if someone's laughing, and, and you've heard this a million mm -hmm. times, but also, even if there's a laugh that, that didn't come, and I'm so mad at myself, and I'm like, I did terribly, I'll walk out the stage door, right. and everyone's telling me how great I am, mm -hmm. these fans that are so loyal, yeah. and it makes me feel uh, so good. It's it's a new living, breathing thing every time you do it, and so, yeah, it's it's very exciting. Yeah, but so yes. God bless them. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> What would what would our readers and fans like to know yes. from Eddie? Exactly. So Maggie would like to know what do you remember of your opening night, your first night in the show? Mm. What was the experience like? What was going through your head? I was just telling Jackie that what I remember most was being uh, in some zombie like state, <laughs> coming off <laughs> right. this, coming off stage and asking my dresser Phil, who I love, mm -hmm. did I sing that in the right key? <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you did. I bet yes. you did. Phil and he like, said, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did great. <laughs> That's what I remember. And how was that and first? And a huge sense of relief. Yeah, mm. sure. Right, right. Because I didn't know what it was going to sound. My no, voice would like sound like a in, in yeah. a microphone. I didn't know what... It would be like I'd never done it with the full band. Mm -hmm. In fact, I didn't even hear that full band. Mm. I swear I didn't. Right, right. But Just that also knew, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, here's the thing I do remember. When I first came rolling on, I could hear sort of like 
titters uh, uh, gathering in the audience, just little, little tiny laughs, like a little crackle of energy. Yeah. Mm. And I felt like, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna suck. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> right. Cause you feel like you've that got support, that support, that like buzz. Oh wait, yeah. yeah, that yeah. buzz. You know that feeling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's like where they're already they're already rooting for you right off exactly. the bat. Exactly. Yeah. And they just can't wait to see. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't really. They've got you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's very. Yeah, there's nothing like that in the film world. Mm. I mean, sometimes the crew is like that. Sometimes a cameraman will be behind the camera, and you know he's got you. Right. Mm. You right. You know he'll. I don't know, just give you a little thumbs up or something. Right. Well, that's multiplied by, what is it, a thousand? To get like that from a thousand people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, no, that's very, that's really cool. It's that's very an interesting, thrill. yeah. Uh, so, Zach, you talked about loving Soft Place to Land, but Zach wants to know if you have any other favorite, like, songs that you listen to while you're off stage in the show. Mm. Oh, I like Lana's song, mm. Don's song, um... What is it called? What is it called? Oh, my gosh. When he, when sees, he sees me. me. Sorry. <laughs> we're all, we're well, that's, sorry, but here's the thing about Sarah Bareilles' music, and I've noticed a lot, I have trouble with the titles, even though I hear the songs every day, yeah. because unlike, I think, and I don't know Broadway well, but unlike a lot of Broadway songs, the titles, her music is very complex, especially mm -hmm. lyrically, mm -hmm. so they don't give themselves to like, oh, that song, that title, you know? Yeah. Right. Do you know right. what I mean? I do, it's yeah. Not, there's not a lot of repetition. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, Lena's song is amazing. Mm -hmm. The yeah. lyrics there, like just that whole idea of if being scared of everything, but mostly scared of being falling in love herself. Right. Mm. And right. that's like the trick of the song. Is there a um? Is there a, a playlist or an uh, an artist that you listen to to get prepared, like psyched up for playing Ogi, or do you kind of just immerse yourself in the show's music? Like, what's your like before heading out on the stage? Your your sort of pattern. Your um, how you like psych yourself up for it? Oh golly, I try to. It's kind of weird. You That's sure right. No weird it? rituals in the Broadway community are yes, they they happen a lot. So feel free to okay. embrace your weird. Okay, since I've never sung before, I do this very long um, vocal warm up. It's okay. super long. Okay. Then I sing the entire song, okay. maybe once or twice yes. in the dressing room. Yeah. Love yeah. No one else I know does that. They're all so confident. <laughs> hey. You know? And then right before I go on, I know this sounds odd, but um, I try to empty my mind of everything mm -hmm. and remind myself that I'm in love with Dawn mm -hmm. and that I'm here to, like the show ends with a baby. Right, right. right the right. show ends with a baby You having being a great little moment with the baby. Yeah. yeah right, and, then, right, right. and then she's pregnant at the very end. Mm -hmm. My Dawn, Dawn is. Yep. And I have a bouquet of flowers that I'm hiding. Mm -hmm. So I try to, to remind myself that this is the start of us having a baby. Right. So remember, that's what you're coming in for. You're insane. You're an insane person. <laughs> but you're but very excited for your baby. There's a baby in there. Aww. Right, right. No, it's, it, I, yeah, because when we first meet you, you're plopped right into after that first date, and now we're just meeting yeah. the crazy person on yeah. the date from, but it's beautiful. Oh, I love it. So this will be our last question. Uh, so Aaron wants to know, what has been the most surprising thing about Broadway? How um how um the character and the story mm. reveals itself so uh, every day differently. Mm. Um, how every day you go on stage and something new, some little windows opened. Mm. They're like, oh my god, that should have been obvious to me to begin with, mm. you know? Because um, when you do it on film, it's like a sprint. You know, you just do it and it's done. Right. And you throw everything you got and it's all instinctive. Mm -hmm. And who knows what came out. Right. And when you do it every day, every day, every day, new things are revealed slowly. Yeah. It's, and that's what I love. Right. And I was going to say, you find that rewarding. You're into that. You I know, love it. Because you never know. I never know what Lena's going to do. Sure. And yeah. she'll do something a little differently. And then I'll, I'll go, oh, my God. Of course. Why didn't I realize mm -hmm. what that mm -hmm. meant? Right. I've said this line a million times. <laughs> but right, you're hearing new things every time. Well, we, as I said, we love the show. We're so excited for you. Congratulations Thank you. on I'm making so your glad. Broadway debut. Um, make sure you go see Waitress. Make sure you go see Eddie in Waitress before April 28th at the Brooks Atkinson Theater. Um, if they were, are you on social media? If they wanted to follow any adventures you're sort of having? I'm not. That's He's all right. Not. You know what? Stand for <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, thank you it. so much, sir. Make sure you go check out the show. Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us wherever you get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we talk to Jared Spector of The Share Show.